and this is the thing. Once you learn the rules and, and master, I don't want to say master the rules, but once you get comfortable with the rules, then you can start to break them to benefit you. Hey guys, welcome to KM Kendra. I've been waiting so long to put out some content for you guys that I just said, you know what? I don't care what my basement looks like. We're still in the middle of trying to get everything fixed up. And at the moment we're, you know, we've got something to where we've got like a loose plan of what's going on. Hopefully by December, someone's gonna come in and dig a bunch of drains in here, put a couple of sump pumps. And then after that's done, we're gonna finish up the basement. You can't tell because it's just brick behind me, but there's a lot of drywall that got removed. We're going to replace the drywall. We're going to finish the floors, put doors where they're supposed to be. And as you can maybe see, especially this line right here, that's where the wall to my studio is supposed to go. I was hoping to have a double door for added install insulation. We're going to do all of that, hopefully, and get this studio up and running by sometime in the beginning of next year, 2021. So that's the plan. We'll see how it goes. But in the meantime, I thought I might as well, since Good old practice pad is pretty much weatherproof. Uh, I can set that up and I can do start doing some lessons. And the first lesson that I want to do, and I think this is going to be a theme with the uh, lessons that I'm going to be giving, is you know you can go to so many different YouTube channels and learn the basics on how from the beginning, of the first time you ever pick up a pair of sticks, to advanced learning. There's guys that can teach those technical type, types of things a lot better than I can. I, I'm admitting that I'm not a very good teacher. I've had a couple of students um, before, and most of the time, what I actually do is just talk philosophy about drums and how the drums relate to music as a whole and what type of philosophy, what type of drummer you want to be. And I think rather than going through and say, this first exercise, I'm going to talk just about uh, how to play a paradiddle. It's not going to be like that. It's going to be more like a little bit of, I, I want to, there's, there's the 80-20 uh, drummer, right? I don't know if you guys are familiar with him. He's a pretty cool, he's got a pretty cool channel going on and he explains things really well. I think for me, it's going to be 80% philosophy and culture and just how I approach the drums and 20% technical stuff. I don't even know like a lot of these terms, which I know that pisses off a lot of people because if you see somebody that you think is a good drummer, is a good musician, and you want to learn how to play like them, it's best when they can explain to you and show to you exactly how that's done and how they got to where they um, are in their careers and in their lives. And I just can't really, I can't do that. The first time I sat behind the drum set, I was able to play a beat. And it's just an understanding and a, and a natural ability, I guess. When I've tried to teach people how to play, it doesn't necessarily, I, I, I don't get the point across. But when I teach my philosophy on the drums, that, you, that tends to go a lot further. So let's get right to the point, right? This first exercise, uh, I want to kind of try to chronicle how I learned how to play drums and hopefully that'll uh, explain things. And I think the main thing I want to show is that there's not one correct way to learn how to play the drums. Case in point, when you talk about picking up the drumsticks and learning how to play for the very first time, I was fortunate enough to have a professional in my family. His name was Carlos Vega. He married my aunt back in the, um, in the 80s and at the time he was playing for James Taylor. I believe he just got the gig for James Taylor right around the time that my, uh, my cousin was born. The first time I saw my, my first concert was backstage at James Taylor and I got to see my uncle playing drums for thousands of people and you know with, with a, a musical background in my family uh, it was just I guess a natural thing for me to want to be a drummer especially seeing it from that perspective. That, that night I went home and I put some Tupperware together and made my own drum set with uh, chopsticks for drumsticks and whatnot and I was banging away to songs ever since and when my uncle found out that I had sort of like a, a liking, an affinity to drums, he basically 
got me, uh, gave me one of his practice pads, gave me a pair of sticks, and he taught me about grip. And he said, there's, you know, I'm sure many of you know, but for, for those who don't know, there's the traditional grip, where you hold it like this, kind of like a marching snare drummer. Then there is the different types of match grips. So you have French, German, American. And he told me all of these things, and he told me exactly how to play each and every one of them. And the thing that he told me that was the most important, you know, all of these things are important for building a foundation, how to play correctly, uh, your posture. He told me when you set up your snare drum, that you should put butt end of your stick at your belly button, and it should be keep your, your stick horizontal to the ground, parallel to the ground, and your playing surface should be at the height of your belly button when you're sitting down. Uh, that's a great first fundamental thing to to learn. Later on, when I was playing in a lot of and and this is the thing, once you learn the rules and, and master I don't want to say master the rules, but once you get comfortable with the rules, then you can start to break them to benefit you. Case in point, for the first couple of years, I would always make sure that my snare drum was this high. Uh, especially when I started playing in punk bands, and for punk, it's so fast that you don't have enough time to really extend your arms. You've got to be really compact. And if your snare drum is low, it takes a lot longer for your arms to go down and hit the snare drum as opposed to whether if, it, if it's higher up. So I started in jazz and punk. Crazy combination, I know. But both of those were better off with a higher snare drum. Once I kind of graduated from punk into a lot more harder rock with a, with a fatter backbeat, it didn't feel right hitting that snare way up here. So I lowered my snare drum. And I found a, a nice happy spot where I can kind of play everything. I can, I can play fast, I can play slow at this height. And it's about a couple of inches, an inch and a half maybe, below my belly button. And that's normally where I keep my snare. It's a sort of, it's not breaking the rules, but it's, you know, it's, it's, it's bending the rules to fit how you want to play. And that goes for grips as well. If you've seen any of my videos, you've seen I, I do grips and I'm all over the place. And I think once you learn how to play all the different grips, traditional, and then you get into the German, French, American, and I think the main thing about learning all these scripts is not just the pos position of your sticks, but also the position of your fingers. For instance, the correct way, there's two correct ways. You can have the fulcrum, which is, if you picture a, a seesaw, right, the fulcrum is right in the middle. That's where the balance point is. It's a little bit different with drumsticks, where, where the fulcrum kind of depends on you, it kind of depends on the stick as well. But you can hold the fulcrum either in between your thumb and your index finger, or your thumb and your middle finger. What works for me, usually, and it depends on the situation, it depends on the speed of how I'm playing, it depends on the power. But usually, I'd say 80-90% of the time, I'm holding it between my thumb and my middle finger. My index fingers are they're the same as my ring and my pinky. They're kind of like support fingers. And a lot of times, if you slow down some of my videos, you'll see I'll even have my pointer finger pointing outward, not even cradling the stick. And it all just depends on feel. Sometimes I can get a harder hit by pointing my finger out, my, my index finger out, rather than holding it in. The faster I go, I usually tend to shift from the middle finger to the index fingers. Sometimes, even when I'm rolling, I'll let loose some of these fingers. Oops. And it all just depends on how you're playing and really the feel 
of what you're playing, whether you're soloing, whether you're playing a song, whether you're practicing, it really just, at least to me, it depends on, on the feel of, of, of what I'm playing. So when you're going from straight rock to a groove to a shuffle to swing, it's best to know all the grips so that when you're adapting your, your play to those styles, you play them in, in all your different grips, right? So if you're playing a, something with, with a little bit of groove, like say a shuffle, you play them in all the different types and then you'll feel after a while which one feels right to you. To me, I don't even know half of the time because I just adapt my grip to however it, like it could be a hybrid of all three matched grips or I could be playing traditional and switch to match in the middle, depending on what it is. I use grips as, a tool, as tools in the toolbox. Whenever I need a different tool, I take it out of the toolbox and start using it. And that's basically how I approach grips and how to play them on the practice pad and on the drum set. Hopefully uh, that kind of made sense to you and you can go about and, and learn how to play the traditional grip, how to play German, French, and American match grips. And once you kind of have a good fundamental basic knowledge of those, then when you start you know, playing different grooves and different feels, you can adapt those grips to best suit those, those feels. Because you, you might never know. You, if you only learn how to play traditional, right, and you're playing punk, it might be misleading to watch someone like Vinnie Caliuta play traditional. He can play anything in traditional and it sounds amazing. But to you and me, if you play every single style with one grip, you might be lacking in one style and strong in another style. But if you change the grips, that might change your weakness into a strength. So it's important to know all the, all the grips, but it's also important to know that you can kind of use them to your advantage rather than being restricted by them and to one or the other. And I think that's my philosophy when I play drums is I like to incorporate everything as much as I can so that I can be the strongest that I can because I need every advantage that I possibly can to play somewhat okay. You know, there's people that are obviously way, way better than I am and playing drums for just about 30 years Hopefully I'm better than a lot of people that have just started and whatnot. So I'm kind of, I, I know I'm kind of in the middle, but I like to, I like to geek out on the philosophy of drums. And my main thing is just finding the right groove to the song that I'm playing and being a, a, a good person so that whoever I'm playing with, musician-wise, in a band or, or whatnot, uh, I'm easy to work with. I always put music first and ego last. If I let ego play and I start to improvise, that's, that's my main weakness is improvising. If I start to improvise, it's going to bring the music down. So I just like to lock into a groove. I have, I've got a small box of tricks that I'll uh, bring out once in a while. But mainly, it's, it's, for me, it's phrasing, it's writing, it's making sure I've got the right groove and that I build upon that groove with each part of the song that passes so that at the end, it's kind of like you as a listener are putting a, some money in the bank every 10, 20 seconds. And then by the end of the song, you've got a good uh, chunk of change there so that it makes it worth listening to the song. And that's kind of like my philosophy. But in any case, it all comes down to the very basics. And one of the very, very first basics is grip. So finding that fulcrum, however you want to hold it, index, middle, traditional, different mash groups match grips and just being able to be as controlled as possible with every hit. Uh, I see a lot of drummers out there, especially the ones that are on the electric kit. It doesn't matter so much where you're playing on the drum head, but it matters a hell of a lot when you're playing on an acoustic kit where you hit your drum. Trying to hit it at the center, you get the best sound all around. You know, when you're on your snare and you want a, a little bit more of a ring, you hit it over to the side, but for the most part, again, the 80-20 rule. I love that drummer, I love that philosophy. 80% of the time, at least, you're gonna be hitting right in the center 
uh, not just the snare drum, but all the toms as well. I hope that, <laughs> I hope I didn't make you dumber as a drummer. I hope that helps somewhat. Let me know what you think. What grips do you guys use? Leave me some comments. Make sure to subscribe. Make sure to like this video. If it helped at all, it would be awesome if you guys shared it. Check out my website at www.kmkandrum, K-M-K-A-N-Drum.com. I just redid it. Uh, I fell in love with Wix again, so I'm doing all the, uh, the web design on, on Wix and whatnot. And there's a lot of really cool stuff. I'm going to be adding stuff every day to it. And hopefully you like this video and you like the, the format of the video. And if you do, let me know and I'll be doing a lot more of these uh, quote-unquote lessons. For now, that's pretty much it. Hopefully I'll talk to you soon and hopefully uh, soon I'll get this studio up so I can get more covers up for you guys. Take it easy. Take care. Bye.